Hey, it's Mercedes with Frameless Media. Today, we are discussing All the Queen's Men, Season 3, Episode 9 and 10. So, we're going to start off with Madam, Blue, and Tommy. Now, they were kind of in the middle of like a shootout. And this is like the aftermath of it. Joey, if you guys remember, he was an outsider that was brought in to be head security. He was um, came on very protective over Madam. And it seemed like Madam was starting to be more trustworthy of him. But in the end, Joey pretty much works for concierge. Now, he did suffer a few injuries, but we don't really see Joey. We don't know if he's dead or alive, but yeah, we don't see him anymore. Now, the second uh, issue that's brought up is we see a body, a body of an older gentleman, and we don't really see the face. We just see a silhouette, and we just assume that this is Madam's dad based off of how this person is dressed. So we are led to believe that her father is deceased. So she, of course, is emotional. She's upset, but she's also angry and wants answers. So she decides to let Tommy and Blue take care of the funeral arrangements. In the meantime, she wants to pay a visit to the nursing home. She needs to have some words with Nurse Johnson. Because how did her father leave the facility when she was supposed to be watching him the whole time and protecting him? Now, while at the facility, she learns that Nurse Johnson has taken a leave of absence. She's somewhat on a vacation, supposedly. Madam does find a way to get Nurse Johnson's address. That means that she can now take it a step further by trying to figure out where this lady lives so she can have a conversation with her. Now, while at the nursing home, Carla shows up. And you would think two sisters should be bonding. They should be you know, on better terms, you know, knowing that their father has passed. But no, Carla comes in accusing Madam of everything. It's your fault. Um, Dad should have been in my care and this would have never happened. In the end, Madam tries to walk away graciously, but Carla continues saying the most hateful things and Madam in return stabs her in the chest. Okay. Now, Carla does survive her wound. She does uh, get to the hospital in time, but you would think that two siblings, they should be able to get along, but no. Madam, even though she is heartbroken, she is sad. She's trying her best not to show her emotions because we still have business to take care of at Club E. So she does show up at the club, and she runs into none other than Tandy, which brings us into the next storyline. So Tandy and her husband... They were entertaining Rayshawn, and looks like they might be having a repeat of what happened in the past with Rayshawn. But no, a robbery takes place. In walks Trouble and Champ. Okay? So the robbery is very successful. They end up getting money, but Rayshawn was not there for money. He wanted revenge, and we see him basically snapping. Like, he snapped and started punching and just hitting Tandy's husband. Now, Tandy's husband um, suffers the most. Like, he's rushed to the hospital, not sure if he survived his injuries. Tandy, on the other hand, is able to live to tell another story, okay? She calls her attorney, which happens to be the district attorney, and they basically have to come up with a plan here because Tandy's under the impression that this robbery is all due to Madam. You know, every, this whole setup is all Madam. Little does Tandy know that really this setup is coming from Rayshawn, Trouble, and Champ. They were there to seek revenge, but Trouble and Champ wanted more. They wanted some money out of the situation, which they do. They get it. They get the money. You would think everything's all good, but Rayshawn, I feel like, is starting to have a guilty conscience because he's very quiet. I don't know if maybe reality kicked him when he realized what he's done, and we see that he disappears. So this kind of spooks uh, Trouble and Champ because they start wondering, like, well, do you think he went to the police? I don't know. We got to go find them. So they're now staked out at the police department. They see none other than Casanova. Casanova's supposed to be dead. But they don't see him, like, in his regular clothing. He is disguised as a homeless man, of course, because he's trying to stay undercover. But they see him. So they make note of it, like, you know what? Um, we got to let Madam know. So they hurry up and got out of there because they were like, you know what, let's get out of here because he might see us and, you know, now, then his cover's blown, then what? So now that we're at the police precinct, this is where we see Detective Davis. She is now being interrogated by the DA. We have video footage that you've kept on your emails and also you have been hooking up with one of the dancers. 
So Detective Davis, it looked like she was trying to get her thoughts together to try to come up with a story, but too late, they got the video. So that means Detective Davis, either she did have this information all along or someone hacked her email and put the evidence there. Meanwhile, we're back at the club. It's Club Eden. It's uh, ladies night again, you know, and the fellas are they're getting ready to perform. And we see Amp. Amp shows up and he's starting to realize that it's too much talking going on about him. Everybody's so worried about him. And then he finally lets the boys know, like, y'all think Dime is so innocent, but little do y'all know she set me up. She found some money in my crib, assumed that I stole it from the club tells Madam, and Madam ends up getting two goons to jump me. So, yeah, they find out the truth, and then he's basically like, look, I, I might have done wrong, but she's done wrong too, okay? So, they find out that piece of information, but they're also more so whispering about his drug use. So, we see Doc and Midnight trying to have a one-on-one -on -one with him. At first, they feel like he's not listening, but then Amp has a change of heart and decides to say, you know what, you guys are right, I need to stop messing with the drugs, messing with the pills, and I need to start getting my act together. So it seemed like he's trying to turn a new leaf. Meanwhile, Madam and Tandy are meeting. The whole purpose of Tandy being there is she wants her money back. And secondly, you set me up. Okay? You you set me up. And um, Madam is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no clue as to what you're talking about. Tandy's like, well, that's what um, Trouble is stating is that um, she's insisting that you are the one that planned this out and you sent them there to rob me so i'm here to collect my money and madam's like uh no ma'am like if they robbed you that sounds like like you guys are even what you did to ray sean this is kind of like the consequences of it right here so they're just that's payback oh well get you know figure out how you gonna get your own money back but i ain't got nothing to do with it <laughs> okay so tandy leaves but before leaving she ends up going to the vip room and hooking up with Big B. Now, if you guys remember, Tandy has always been a loyal client of Babyface. So we see that there might be some tension later on with Babyface and Big B because rule number one, you don't steal each other's clients, especially if they're tippers. Come on now. In the midst of all of this happening, Trouble and Champ, they are trying their hardest to try to talk to Matt. I'm like, girl, we need to talk to you. We just really need to talk to you. But who's standing in their way? It's Tommy. Tommy wants to know, like, why are y'all so insistent on trying to talk to Madam? She is busy. We got stuff going on and whatnot. And Trouble's like, look, we saw Casanova. He at first didn't believe her. And Trouble's like, look, Champ even saw him too. They double down on it now. Tommy is starting to, like, question, like, okay, so if both of y'all did see him, then this must be true. So his mind starts to wonder now, is Big D telling the truth or is Big D hiding something? Because Casanova's supposed to be dead. So time will only tell. So that's that's a whole other storyline there as well. And then lastly, we finally get um, we finally get information on Nurse Johnson. Finally, we we now know that she's at home. They come um when I say they, I mean Madam Tommy and Blue. They are all there trying to figure out like, girl, we gotta talk. Like she means that she had a gun in hand. She's ready to like get rid of Nurse Johnson because she feels like Nurse Johnson is is working with concierge. Come to find out, her dad is still alive. And that's the end of the uh, the last episode. So great storylines. Like I said, you got some major ones, and then you have some minor ones in there. So Detective Davis, she's been set up. Someone's hacked her email. Fuego. Fuego even um, had his uh, email hacked as well. And he's trying to figure out, like, okay, who's behind all of this? Like, something's going on. Big D. It's only a matter of time before his cover is blown. Like, I feel like he's in too deep. He's starting to be more friendly with the guys, and they're teaching him dance moves and whatnot. I feel like he should have got in, and he needs to plan on, plan on getting out. I don't know how long he can keep his cover a secret before everybody starts to realize that he's, he's working with the police, okay? So these were two great episodes here. I have to say I would give it a 8 out of 10. I got to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I am glad to see that this show is back on the air. I just wish they would advertise it more because I kept uh, wondering, like, when is it coming back? When is it coming back? Luckily, I just found out that it was coming back by going into the BET Plus app. But 8 out of 10, definitely for me. What are your thoughts? Leave your comments below, and I'll see you guys for another review. Bye.